It's Casey Vineyard here at Wonders of Wildlife National Museum and Aquarium. We are so excited to have you here as we launch our newest at-home mission through Mission Conservation, Freshwater Ecosystems. Throughout this month, you will get to meet multiple partners to learn about lakes, rivers, and streams, as well as the animals that inhabit them. In order to play this really fun mission, all you have to do is log on to our Mission Conservation website at www.wondersofwildlife.org forward slash mission dash conservation. That there will bring you to our mission conservation web page. Web page. Sorry about that. On this website, I will bring your attention down to get the app. Once you click download, that will take you to download the Agents of Discovery app, which you will need to play any mission conservation mission. Once you have that app downloaded, create a username and log in. Hit the search bar, type in mission conservation. This is where all of our at-home missions will pop up for you once you're ready to play. Once you have the mission popped up and loaded, we are gonna direct you down to another part of the website where it says print images. Click download and you have the option to either play the trigger images pulled up on your screen with your mobile device or you can even print them off, set them up outside or in a classroom and you can play as if it were a virtual scavenger hunt. The last place that I'm going to take you to on the website is schedule of missions and activities. This tab will show you all of the missions we have live including our current mission freshwater ecosystems. Under this tab, you will also find our activity guide that we have specifically made for you at home. There will be a craft, an awesome outdoor activity, and something that you can do to promote conservation for freshwater ecosystems. The last thing that I wanted to show you on this tab is your mission reward. This is your prize that you get for completing your mission. If you click on this mission reward, it will give you directions on how to download your Snapchat filter once the mission has been completed. So I'm currently standing here in our community pond exhibit. For those of you who have joined us in the past live stream, some of you may know about this freshwater exhibit. It's about 23 feet deep and it's filled with roughly 130,000 gallons of water. This exhibit is full of freshwater game species like catfish, sturgeon, gar, bass. Uh, so this brings me to our partners for the week. We have Julia and Dane from Wildlife Forever here to talk about different invasive species as well as the uh, fish water art contest. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing well, Casey. Thanks for having us today. Yeah, what do you have for us today? Yeah, we have a great presentation and we are so excited to share. So I'm gonna go ahead and start screen sharing now. And today we're gonna to talk a little bit more about the fish art contest, invasive species, and how everyone at home can help protect freshwater ecosystems. Next. So like Casey said, our presenters today are Dane Hinker, our conservation program manager, who will be speaking later during our presentation. And my name is Julia Luger. I'm the education and communication director here at Wildlife Forever. Wildlife Forever is a nonprofit based in White Bear Lake, Minnesota. We've been working for more than 33 years to protect and conserve America's fish and wildlife. Today, we have three main programs that actually all benefit freshwater ecosystems. Our first, which is our newest program, is called Prairie City USA. We work with local cities and towns to convert their mowed lawns into native prairie habitat. Those restored prairie plants actually help filter and clean water and reduce erosion, improving water quality in the local ecosystem. We have our Clean Drain Dry initiative, which educates recreational users about the threats of aquatic invasive species. And we have our Fish Art Contest, which introduces youth to the wonderful world of fish. The Fish Art Contest is a free art and creative writing competition open to youth in kindergarten through 12th grade. We have an official fish list of more than 100 different species, ranging from freshwater, saltwater, and migratory species 
that anyone around the world can learn and participate in. Our 2021 contest is open right now. You actually have about three more weeks to get your entry in either by, by mail or email. The Fish Art Contest is proudly supported by our title sponsor, Bass Pro Shops, by the USDA Forest Service, Guy Harvey Ocean Foundation, National Fish Habitat Partnership, and Western Native Trout Initiative. We are really excited for this year of the contest, and I'm actually going to stop screen sharing to show you just a few entries we've already received. So, Already, we've gotten entries from participants around the US and actually from about 20 different countries. We've gotten 500 different pieces of art and writing, highlighting some of the beautiful species that you can find around this globe. We can't wait to see your entry and I can't wait to share a little bit more about the wonders of freshwater fish. I'm going to go ahead and hop back into our presentation now. So you might be asking yourself, why should we celebrate or why should we even be interested in freshwater fish species? Well, around the world, including every ocean, lake, river, stream, marsh, and bog, freshwater aquatic habitat only makes up about 1% of all of that aquatic habitat around the world. Now that small amount of habitat actually is important for 51% of all known fish species. About over 18,000 different fish species rely on freshwater ecosystems, either as their full-time home or as a place where they migrate to and from. In, in addition to freshwater fish being just hugely diverse, they are also an important source of nutrition for humans. Fish are high in protein and lysine and calcium, and about 12 million tons of freshwater fish are harvested and sold throughout the world. Scientists actually predict that that number, 12 million tons, could be about 65% higher when you calculate in all the fish that are caught and eaten by the same person. A large number of the freshwater fish that are caught around the world are harvested in low income and food deficient countries, which means that these fish are a really important source of animal protein for people all around the world. Now, Fish aren't only good to eat. They're also a really fun thing to catch. Many of you may have been fishing and you know that going fishing or being an angler is a great way to get outside and connect with nature. During the COVID pandemic around the world, people used fishing as a way to get outside and get connected in a safe way. Around the world, that angling, including the equipment, licensing, generates about $100 billion, and it creates more than a million jobs. So it's a really important thing for everyone. Now, if you're not into catching fish, you might be one of the millions and billions of actually people around the world that has a pet fish. In the US alone, there are more than 142 million pet fish. They're the most popular pet in the entire world. Having an aquarium in your home or your dentist's office or doctor's office actually reduces stress, reduces anxiety, and it lowers blood pressure. More than 5,000 different freshwater fish species are a good option for pets and all of that buying, selling, and breeding of freshwater fish generates $30 billion for the global economy. Next. Now, fish aren't just important for us. They also play a really important role in the place they live. Fish, especially these migratory fish, the photo here in the background is of American shad. 
These fish live part of their life in the ocean and then move through freshwater streams, bringing in important nutrients to feed not only predators, but also some of those lower um, decomposers and other things when they die. So they play this really important role in freshwater ecosystems. But freshwater fish are unfortunately in trouble. Scientists predict that 30% of all freshwater fish species are at risk of extinction. Last year alone, 16 freshwater fish species were declared extinct. Freshwater fish are um, having issues with pollution, overfishing, with damming of free flowing rivers. They're struggling with climate change and with invasive species. Invasive species, like I talked about earlier, is one thing that Wildlife Forever is working on. So I'm gonna pass this presentation over to Dane so he can share a little bit more with you about them. Yeah, thanks, Julia. And if I can show my screen here at the office, I got a couple of examples of these invasive species that I'd like to show you guys. I'm not sure if Kendra is able to, there we go. All right, can you guys see this? This is a silver carp and these things are invasive and they can get up to 50 inches long and 90 pounds and they can have devastating impacts on our freshwater ecosystems. And we also have tiny little zebra mussels that are quite a bit smaller but can have even larger impacts to our ecosystems. So we can jump back over to the presentation there and I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit more about the impacts of invasive species and what you guys can do to prevent the spread. So we have here just a couple example photos of, uh, of those species in real life, zebra mussels on the left, uh, just totally covering up a native clam, really sad picture. And then on the right, you can see silver carp, also called flying carp, as you can see why when uh, a boat's traveling through the water it will actually disturb them and, and they can go flying up to the air in large infestations and it can actually hurt people as you're as you're boating through the water. So there's a lot of reasons to prevent the spread. We can jump to the next slide. So some of you may have heard of invasives, but uh, some of you may not have. So I'm going to just start from the beginning with what is an invasive species and really when it comes down to it, it's a plant, animal, or other organism that's not native to an ecosystem. They've been brought here usually by humans, um, intentionally or not, usually not, uh, and they can have really harmful effects to local ecosystems, especially freshwater ones, uh, because for one reason, they don't have any natural predators. They're, they've been brought into a new lake, river, or stream, for example, and just imagine if you didn't have any predators, you'd, be, you'd have free reign to reproduce and take over uh, that ecosystem, which can really push out some of the native species that we're trying to protect. Uh, and we can go to the next one. So invasive species have quite a few different impacts. Um, as I said before, uh, how they can affect an ecosystem, there's a lot of different things going on with each one of those um, ecosystems, whether it be lake, river, or stream. Uh, but one of the more uh, scary things is that they can lead to extinction of native species. Right now, today, as we speak, invasive species are uh, currently um, affecting threatened or endangered species, uh, and 50% of those are because of invasive species. Uh, and so a lot of our um, threatened and endangered species need our help just to, just to stay alive. So they're really destroying biodiversity. Um, around the globe, not only in aquatic ecosystems, but also on land and, and terrestrial um, habitats as well. Um, but they permanently alter the ecosystem because really once they get there, there's not a lot that we can do to treat them, at least currently with the science that's out there. So we have to do our, our best uh, to prevent the spread before it happens. Um, and they can also affect outdoor recreation. Uh, some of you may have been trying to swim through uh, a lake and, and close to shore, there may be a lot of vegetation growing and really tough to swim through. And it could be invasive species. Some of that is native and, and we like it, but uh, you can usually tell when it's taking over an area that doesn't look normal. 
Um, also, zebra mussels, like I, I talked about before, are really sharp. Their shells uh, on, on the shore can cut your feet, uh, so they can be a hazard to human health as well. And we can, uh, also, I want to show you guys a video firsthand of some of these invasive species. We have some really good footage uh, to show of some of the impacts that they have uh, on our aquatic ecosystems. The United States abounds with an abundance of water resources. These waters have shaped generations of Americans into passionate users and stewards of the environment. The introduction and proliferation of aquatic invasive species has and is continuing to change aquatic environments and how we and nature coexist with them. Stewardship of nature is a responsibility of all of us. Let's work together to hand down a healthy tomorrow for future generations to protect and enjoy. Please visit cleandraindry.org to learn more about aquatic invasive species and what you can do to help prevent the spread. This message is brought to you by the Clean Drain Dry Initiative and the U.S. Forest Service. Okay, so you guys can see firsthand there once you get some underwater footage uh, of some of those invasive species that we're talking about, just how, um, how much they can spread and just encrust the total entire bottom of a, of a lake covering all the rocks and, and some of the plants that you saw there just totally covering the lake shore. Um, it's just devastating to see. So if we can jump back into the presentation, um, we'll keep talking about some of the impacts here. So one of the big questions is, well, how do they get here? And so there's a couple of things. We have primary and secondary spread. Um, primarily, uh, we have large uh, ocean going ships. Um, you know, in today's world, we have a lot of international travel and trade and commerce going on. And so with that, there are some consequences. As you can see in the background photo is one of the ships that I'm talking about. And what, what can happen is when one of these ships goes off to uh, some international waters, and sometimes what they can do is suck in water. When they come back into the United States to pick up a new load, they actually dump that water out. It's really just there for a stabilizer uh, during their travel. Um, but when they dump that water out, it can still contain live organisms from a completely different ecosystem uh, someplace else around the planet. And so some of those species can actually get established here and, uh, and take over. And like I said before, just have the same impacts that you saw. No predators, they, they have free reign and they affect the balance of the ecosystem. But we also have secondary spread, which really comes down to you and me and, and things that we can do to prevent it. Um, but boats and trailers, you know, when we go from one, one water body to the next, uh, usually they can hitchhike a ride on our gear. So um, if you have a boat and then you pull out and put it on the trailer, there might be just a little bit of water left over or maybe just a few weeds that get uh, tied onto the trailer as you pull it out. Well, those things, um, that can be the means for introduction into a new water body if you if you go over you know that same day. Um, fishing gear is another um, item that we need to worry about cleaning and making sure that we don't transport any invasives that way. Um, but also not mentioned on here are um, docks, lifts and rafts. You know, people that have cabins, it's, it's important to make sure that anytime you pull anything out of the water to examine it and make sure there's nothing, um, you know, odd growing on it that if it's being transported to another water body, uh, you need to pay attention to that before it, before it goes there because it could have those same impacts somewhere else. And we don't want that. So let's jump over to the next slide. So I wanted to take you guys through one case study of, of just one species, just to kind of give you an example of, of, um, of these invasives and how they can have impacts and how they get here, kind of the whole story. Because really, if I were to do this for every one, there's thousands of species here now. Um, and so 
Some of them have more impacts than others, but zebra mussels are one of the worst. Uh, and they're pretty widely known. Most of you have probably heard of them before, but they can survive in lakes, rivers, and streams, and ponds. But they were introduced 30 years ago by the same means that I described these ocean going ships um, in the ballast water that got dumped out into the Great Lakes 30 years ago. And uh, since then, you can see the map on the bottom right, uh, all the states in green, they now have zebra mussels from that initial introduction. Isn't that crazy to think about them getting spread that far in 30 years? And there's still quite a few states that don't have them yet. So we have a lot of work to do to protect them. Um, but the impacts of zebra mussels really come down to the fact that they consume large amounts of microscopic plants. They're called filter feeders. So you have millions of these in a lake or water body, and they're just filtering out all the nutrients and, and plants and that other native species need. And so they're out competing and stealing that food from them and they have no predators. So they just continue to do that more and more. And one female can produce up to 1 million eggs during one season. So you can see as a mass producer like that, they can start to take over a lake pretty quickly. We can jump over to the next slide. The other impacts they can have uh, are just by the fact that they can attach to any hard surface. So here in the photo, you can see a clogged water pipe that zebra mussels have found their way in and reproduced and spread and clogged it completely. And that's having uh, quite a bit of financial impacts on our economy because that's happening um, all over the country. And so you think about all the infrastructure that needs to be rebuilt, put in, um, it's just a nightmare. But they can do the same thing inside a, a, a boat motor, foul boat motors that way. And as I mentioned before, um, if their shells are on the shore, which they often get washed ashore, uh, they, can, they can cut your feet pretty easily. They're really small, really sharp, uh, and it doesn't take much to, to cut your foot with one of those. And we can go to the next slide. So you may be wondering, it, it sounds kind of depressing, well, what can we do? Um, and that's, that's one of the programs that we have here at Wildlife Forever is trying to slow the spread and to stop the spread of invasive species through our clean, drain, dry initiative. Um, and so if you go to the next slide, you can see some of the, some of the work that we do. Uh, we have, it's really a public outreach and education campaign that we run here out of our office, um, educating the public on the best management practices to stop the spread of invasives. And so you'll see signs at boat ramps reminding uh, boaters and anglers and, and just outdoor recreational users how to prevent the spread. And so clean, drain, dry are kind of the common principles that you need to remember. Um, and on the next slide, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what those steps really mean. So the three simple steps, clean, drain, dry, is kind of the mantra that we have at Wildlife Forever. Um, starts with clean. You clean all the your boats, trailers, and gear, remove any weeds, mud, uh, any sort of debris that's that's left on after you pull them out um, and just making sure that before you go to another water body um, you have that step completed the next step is drain <clears throat> really the common denominator for spreading invasives is water if you get rid of all the water they don't have a way to survive and so if you uh, if you drain out your boat bilge motor live well they have no place to hide um, so it's just a matter of pulling the drain plug, which is the law in most states, um, and also trashing unused bait. Um, anglers know that, that live bait uh, is something that you don't want to just dump into the, the lake, stream, or pond when you're done fishing. You actually put it in the, in the trash disposal bin uh, because those can, um, they can spread or spread diseases sometimes. So that's another step. And lastly, dry. If everything is dry, like I said before, there's no water, nothing to survive in. So five days is kind of the, um, the thing to remember. Most, most watercraft will dry in five days, or at least to the point where there's very little chance of spreading anything. And if you can't dry uh, and let it sit for five days, you can actually decontaminate, it's called, with high pressure, high heat water. It's got to be 120 degrees uh, to kill the invasive mussels or plants. Uh, and that's a good way to, to stop the spread as well. And we'll go to the next slide. So in addition to some of the um, education that we do, we also provide tools 
for different public accesses. So here you can see a boat ramp and we've installed a cleaning station, just like you'd pull up to one to clean out your car. We have the same thing now for boats. Uh, it makes it easy for people to reach under your trailer, pull out any weeds. You can see there, uh, he's pulling out a, a weed off the back of the prop, the propeller there of the motor. Uh, anything even that small needs to come off. Uh, so these stations you'll see have um, an air compressor for an air hose. You can blow things off or they've got a brush. Um, they've got a wrench to pull your plug. Um, and there's also a vacuum. You can, you can suck all the water out or um, vacuum up dirt and debris. And uh, actually, if you want to show my screen here at the office again, I have a couple of these tools to, to show you firsthand uh, in a smaller station that uh, we're starting to see more and more. And I want you guys to know what that looks like because um, we, uh, we distribute these across the country. So you may see some in your backyard sometime soon. But um, I don't know if I'm full screen there. But if you guys can see this uh, plug wrench, this is actually used to twist and pull out your uh, boat plug and drain your boat out. So that's an important step. And like I said, a law in most states before you go to the next water body or before you leave that water body to do. Uh, we also have, this is on a stick, but an aqua weed stick. And that's used to hook and pull and scrape weeds and reach under trailers and, and get all the debris off your, your boat. And then behind me, it's kind of small, but you can see another uh, watercraft cleaning station there. So that's the type of thing that we'd like to see more and more at boat ramps um, to give people the tools. Of course, you can still do it without having a cleaning station there, but it's a great reminder uh, for people and, and makes it easier to do the right thing. Um, so we can jump back to the presentation. Um, so lastly, I'm gonna leave you guys with how you can help. So remembering always the steps of clean, drain, dry, but in addition to that, um, it's understanding and learning the species, the invasive species that might be in your area. Because if we have active citizens and volunteers looking for these things uh, and catching them early, that's our best chance of slowing the spread. Because once they get established, oh, it's really tough to, to do anything about it. So uh, learn the species in your area. And if you see anything, contact your local uh, state conservation office. There usually is an uh, employee there that that is taking those calls and would be extremely uh, glad that you called and, and let them know that you may have found something. So that's the main thing with invasive species is you see something, say something, and just practicing the, the clean, drain, dry steps. And Julie was gonna take you through some of these other um, best management practices for things you can do in your area. Yeah, great, thanks, Dean. So like Dane said, you can make a big impact by preventing the spread of invasive species. You can also help protect freshwater ecosystems and freshwater fish by cleaning up around your house. If you find litter on the streets or your local beaches, make sure you clean that up. Uh, if you're out fishing and you're not planning on eating your catch, you can be a responsible angler and practice uh, catch and release. You can help prevent or slow climate change by reducing your carbon footprint. And like Dane said, you can stay educated, learn more about the freshwater ecosystems in your area, about the fish and the help that they need, and learn more about invasive species. On our last slide, we would love to have you join us. Um, if you'd like to learn more about the Fish Art Contest, you can go to fishart.org. If you'd like to learn more about invasive species, go to cleantraindry.org. Our contact uh, information is there. We would love to get you connected and uh, help you take the next step to pr preserving freshwater ecosystems. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much, Julie and Dane. We loved having you as a partner today. Um, I can truly say that I learned something new about invasive species. Just a reminder, when you're out hiking, you're fishing, you're boating, or recreating, be sure to clean off your vessel, your boots, and other gear that you bring with you to minimize what invasive species may be sticking with you. So that is all the time that we have for you today. But before we go, I wanted to share an opportunity with you to get involved with freshwater ecosystems. 
So as we talked about earlier, another great way to participate in conservation awareness this month is the Fish Art Contest. Wonders of Wildlife is Missouri host for the Wildlife Forever Fish Art Contest. The contest is a great way to introduce young people to the wonders of fishing, the joy of fishing, and the importance of aquatic conservation. The Fish Art Contest uses art, science, creative writing to foster the connections to the outdoors and inspire the next generation of stewards. To, complete, or to compete, uh, participants will submit an entry consisting of a completed entry form, um, an illustration of a fish from the official fish list, and one page creating writing submission. The 2021 contest deadline is March 31st, 2021. So there's still plenty of time to submit those requirements. For more information, check out our website at www.wondersofwildlife.org forward slash education forward slash fish dash art dash contest and then forward slash at the end. Well, that is all the time that we have for this stream, but we will see you next Tuesday as we continue to talk about freshwater ecosystems at 1.30 central time with our partner, NOAA. Don't forget to tune in and remember, we all live downstream.